are different types of frames in CAN? Let's figure out answer to this question in our today's video. Hello everyone, welcome to Link Frequency and I'm Ashwarya Patta. This video is part of our course that is Introduction to AutoSAP. So without any further delay, let's get started. In the CAN protocol, there are several types of frames used for communication. The CAN protocol is commonly used in automotive and industrial applications for robust and reliable data exchange between the ECUs. So let us list the different types of frames in the CAN protocol. The first one is data frame, which is used to send the data in the CAN network. The second one is remote frame, which is used to request the data in the CAN network. The third one is error frame, which is used to send the error information in the CAN network. The fourth one is overload frame, which is used to notify the incomplete data reception. Last but not the least, interspace frame. The interframe space is not a frame type itself, but it represents the time intervals between the consecutive frames. It provides a gap between frames to ensure proper synchronization and allow the bus arbitration and error detection. Now, it's time to understand each of them in detail. The first one is data frame. Data frames are the most commonly used frame types in the CAN protocol. They carry the actual data from the transmitting node to the one or more receiving node. Data frames contain an 11-bit identifier or a 29-bit identifier. These identifiers uniquely identifies the message content and priority. The screen represents the CAN data frame which includes the following fields like start of frame, arbitration field, control field, data, CRC field, acknowledgement field and lastly the end of frame. The data frame can carry up to 8 bytes of data payload. We learnt about the fields in our previous video, hence we will not discuss more about that in this particular video. Moving ahead, now let's look into the second type that is remote frame. A node that requires data from another node on the CAN network requests a transmission by sending a remote frame. Instead of carrying actual data, they contain an identifier that is CAN ID and a request flag that is RTR, which indicates that the transmitting node expects the receiving node to send the corresponding data frame in response. A remote frame is the same as that of data frame, without the data field and with the RTR bit value recessive. The use of remote frames allows for efficient data transmission and reduces the bus load in the CAN network. Nodes can request data on demand, and only the required data frames are transmitted in response to the remote frame, thus minimizing unnecessary communication and optimizing network performance. The screen also represents the remote frame in detail. Now, let's look into the third type of frame that is error frame. Error frames are generated by a node when it detects an error condition on the CAN bus. These frames indicate that an error has occurred. These errors can be bit error, frame format violation, or any other error conditions. Error frames help in identifying and diagnosing the issue within the network. When an error frame is transmitted, it has a higher priority than any other type of frames in the CAN protocol. This priority ensures that the error conditions are communicated and given immediate attention by all the nodes on the CAN bus. Upon receiving an error frame, all the nodes on the CAN bus monitor the bus state and perform error handling mechanism procedures. These procedures typically involve error logging, error counter incrementing, or error recovery mechanisms depending on the severity of the errors. The error frame is also represented on the screen for reference. Now let's move into the next type of frame that is overload frame. Overload frames are used to indicate that a transmitting node is overloaded and cannot process additional messages. The purpose of overload frame is to temporarily halt the transmission of new message to the overloaded node. Upon receiving a overload frame, other nodes on the bus delay their message transmission for a specific period of time. This time is known as overload frame period. It's important to understand that an overload frame does not carry any data payload. Its main purpose is to communicate the overloaded state of a node and request a temporary reduction in the message traffic. Once the overload frame period expires, the CAN network returns to its normal operating state and nodes resume their regular message transmission. The duration of the overload frame period is determined by the CAN implementation and it varies depending on the specific system configurations. This period allows the overload node to catch up with its process task and reduce the burden on its resources. The screen represents the overload frame for reference. So, these are the types of frames that are present in the CAN protocol. 
So this video was all about understanding the types of frames in CAN. Thank you so much for watching our video content. If there are any queries related to the video, you can surely comment down in the comment section. Until we meet on our next video, happy learning. Tune yourself to make a difference.